All right, what's going on, Internet? Welcome back to episode two of Switching to Linux Mint 17.1. And in the last episode, we just had a quick look at setting up the system from the base sort of 17, Mint 17.1 default look and feel. We also set up the servers, the repositories, installed some updates, and uh, had a quick look at, in terms of the customization features of Linux Mint 17.1. Well, today we're gonna have a look at apps. It's all about apps in this episode. So let's get down to it. Uh, first of all, we're going to have a look at the software center because that is by far the best and easiest way to install software on Linux Mint. Now, while I have had a bit of a whinge about the Mint software manager in the past, to be honest, there really hasn't been any major innovation in software management on Linux for the last probably three years now. Uh, and I guess that's just because there's not really that much need for it either. Most people that come in here now, they kind of get the idea of how an app store or how a software, uh, how a software installer works in terms of different categories, different apps in those categories. Um, so there's really no need. Um, to kind of work on something that isn't broken. Obviously, getting something a bit more bigger, brighter, and colorful would be great, but to be honest, they kind of be wasting resources uh, in, a, in an operating system that's already doing so incredibly well and uh, further above the competition, in my opinion, in terms of usability in every, in every other sphere. So, first of all, we'll have a quick peek in the featured category. Uh, and again, right up, right off the bat here, we've got some fantastic software on offer. Uh, all of this stuff is very easy to install. So for example, let's have a look at what version of the Opera web browser we're running here, or that is available to install. It is the older version of the Opera uh, desktop browser. So it'll be good to see when that one gets updated uh, to the latest version 15, I believe it is. For the moment, Firefox will do just fine. And uh, also I'm pretty sure GIMP is already installed. Yes, indeed it is. So as you can see, you do get screenshots, you get comments, you get ratings about the different apps. Uh, as you can see here, we've got some different screenshots that are available for the different apps. And also a couple of comments there as well. You can leave your review and feedback there for each software you install. I'm not gonna do that today because that's gonna take way too long. But let's start out and I'm just gonna start installing some software here, queuing it up and seeing how long we can go before the software manager crashes. So first up, we've got Shutter, which is a fantastic screenshot program for any of you that don't know uh, what Shutter is and what it's capable of. It's basically like your print screen, but on steroids. It's got some fantastic editing, sharing options there, as well as uh, making it super easy just to capture as many screenshots as possible. Find it very helpful when I'm doing videos. Uh, next up, we've got the Rapid Photo Downloader. And if I just type Rapid Photo, and there doesn't seem to be much going on there. It should be in the repositories for Ubuntu, so hence it should be in there for Linux Mint as well. Doesn't appear like there's anything going on there, so let's see if we can find it in the categories. I will be a little bit disappointed if I can't find it, but I guess that's the way it goes. You do have the Picasa image manager there as well, uh, which is a pretty smooth one from Google. Uh, obviously, it does kind of run in its own little wine bottle, but it is version 3 uh, as opposed to the older version 2.8, which used to run uh, on, uh, which used to be the one that ran on Linux. But this is going to be the last one that's going to be available to be installed on Linux as they cut support for it um, uh, from Google from the head down. So we're also going to install Shotwell because I have always enjoyed Shotwell and I probably always will. Uh, it's more or less at the at the most recent version. There probably is a more recent version in, in the 14.10 repositories, but it's a little beside the point because Linux Mint is chasing stability here, not the latest features, which I highly commend it for. Uh, now, what else are we going to install? Uh, there's an app that I love called Focus Writer, and I've done a review on it before, and I definitely recommend that if you haven't checked it out before and you do enjoy writing, that you give it a go, because basically it's just a very minimalist text editor that's designed to be distraction-free. And uh, basically, if you crank this, if you if you open up this one, pop it into full screen, and then crank some really uh, calm music, you can get a lot of writing done, in a, uh, obviously in a very sort of non-distracting environment. Now, when it comes to audio editing, nothing can beat Audacity, so that's what we're going to install here. Um, obviously, Audacity has been one of those flagship open source apps for quite some time. And as you can see, uh, this, this uh, software management is just churning through these software installs. 
Obviously it helps that the internet connection is uh, pretty speedy as well, but uh, it's not really slowing up here at all, no matter what I throw at it. Now Banshee is my music player of choice, and I know some of you don't like the idea of using a mono installed app, but chances are if you're using Linux Mint and you like what Linux Mint do, then you won't mind using Banshee either. It has some great uh, integration in terms of if you already have an iTunes library on your Windows partition, if you're dual booting, then it will automatically detect what's on that, uh, what's in that iTunes library and bring it all over into Banshee very, very, in a very similar fashion. Uh, one thing I also do enjoy uh, using every now and again is Pitify, the video editor. Now obviously this is undergoing a fantastic crowdsourced uh, uh, funding campaign at the moment to get it up to version 1. It is at version 9.4 at the moment and this isn't the most up to date version that's available. So I'm not going to install that for the moment, we're going to go out and grab that in a PPA later on in the series once we look at adding external software. However, I am going to install KDN Live, the fantastic video editor from the KDE camp. Uh, obviously this means installing a few extra libraries, but for the functions and features that you get in a non-linear uh, non video editor, I very much compare it to Sony Vegas in terms of what it's capable of doing in raw video editing. Obviously Vegas has some great proprietary audio editing in there as well. But on the Linux side of things, Kdenlive Live is about as good as it gets right now. And uh, for me, that's uh, more than enough. Uh, also, let's have a look in here for Skype, as uh, Skype is just one of those things that you just kind of have to have, uh, as, uh, yeah, it's obviously the, the premium, uh, oh, I guess the go-to uh, VoIP client for a lot of people. So that's fine. And I would have installed Opera by now, but it's uh, not the right version. And it appears Rapid Photo Downloader is actually in the software repositories here. For some reason, I couldn't find it before because it was just giving me the dashes, not the individual spaces. So there we go. We found the app that we're looking for. And I think that'll probably about do us from the App Store or from the software manager here in Linux Mint. One other thing that I do in really enjoy using is a good keyboard launcher. And uh, obviously there are plenty of keyboard launchers out there. You can choose from uh, Synapse, you can choose from Kupfer, or you can use Gnome Do. Uh, it's been a while since I used Synapse, so I'm gonna see if I can find that in the repositories here. Doesn't look like it exists anymore, which is a little sad. So I guess we're gonna have to go with Gnome Do. And again, you've gotta be fairly specific with the search term that you give it. So let's install GNOME Do, and we shall also install the extra plugins so that I can get some extra functionality there. Uh, also very important stuff. Having a good keyboard launcher will boost your productivity a lot, especially when you get used to it, uh, as you'll find you'll have to take your fingers off the keyboard for less and less things. Now one feature that I really am going to miss in Linux Mint is the HUD or the HUD uh, functionality that you get in Ubuntu's Unity interface. Uh, I really, really like that, and I've always find, found it hard to convince myself to get away from it, um, but I'm giving it a shot and just seeing how we go. Um, all right, so now let's talk about some third-party apps that I've got to pull in from elsewhere uh, in the PPAs, for example. So first up, uh, we'll jump into the Firefox web browser and have a look around and see what we can find in terms of other bits and pieces that I need to get. So, first thing we need to do is we need to find a cloud-based music player for my Google Play music collection. Uh, so, if we go, I think it's called the Nivola player. Uh, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. And funnily enough, Firefox is giving me issues. Well, this sucks. All right, let's try just going straight to Google. That's one thing that kind of has bugged me, but I get why it bugs me in terms of uh, in terms of Linux Mint bundling in uh, search affiliates uh, by default in Firefox. I get it, they need um, extra revenue and things like that to keep their project running, but uh, it'd be great if they made it a little bit easier for you to choose. But regardless, here we are, so let's just get on with the spuds. So I believe it's called the Nivola uh, Player. I can't exactly remember um, if that's correct or not. But basically, it is a music player that helps integrate cloud music um, services that you might have, like Google Play Music, for example, so that you can run it inside, uh, inside a desktop environment natively. 
So all we have to do is open up the terminal and add an external repository. And again, there is a way to do this in the graphical user interface, but for the purposes of this demonstration, it's easier just to cut, copy and paste. Uh, so we're gonna add the repository here by just copying and pasting like such. And if we give it a root password, it will add that repository. And I can say enter. And then I will tell it to update the list of repositories that are out there as such. And then I will tell it to install the new Nivola player. So we'll paste the final command here so that we have our music player installed. And now it's gonna go out and grab the packages that it needs uh, to obviously install the Nivola Cloud player. And give it a second longer and it will pretty much be finished. All right, now we're gonna go out and get the Google Chrome web browser and also the Opera web browser, which I think I will get first. Uh, because I haven't played around with the recent release of Opera 15, so that's always worth a try. My goodness, Opera 26 is what's available out there now. Here I was thinking Opera 15, I don't really know why there. But there we go, we're pretty much finished, and again, it's going to open up in a .deb, which is essentially like a .exe for, uh, for Debian-based distributions like Ubuntu and Linux Mint. It will give us a quick readout of dependencies and extra software that it will be installing, if any, and then it will give us the option to install it uh, here in a little bit. As you can see here, we've got a bit of a description. We can go through the details, included fi files, just so that we know exactly what's going on here. It does tell us that it is not free software, it is proprietary, and it also tells me that I've got an extra dependency I need to download and get. So it's gonna do all that for me. I'll just give it the root password and it will take a second here and it will pretty much be done. All right, now there's only one other thing that we need to look into and that is a good Twitter client. Now one Twitter client that I've had a, relative, uh, a relatively good amount of success with on the GNOME side of things is the Twitter client known as Birdie. Uh, it's an elementary style app, which is probably why I like it uh, because of the fact it gives you a very clean interface that you can uh, interact with your Twitter account and also I found it to be the most stable and best looking as well. Uh, so again, we're gonna be going for Ubuntu, going into Ubuntu 14.04, asking for the 64 bit, and it will download a .deb file as well. And I think that's about all we need in terms of apps. Uh, we've got all of the stuff that we're gonna to need to get this show on the road uh, installed straight off the bat here. So that's what I'll be using to edit up these videos. And obviously Twitter, uh, you can, if you have any questions or if you have any suggestions for good apps to look into during this switching to Linux Mint 17.1 series, then definitely contact me there uh, because I'm about to get Birdie up and authenticated with, the, uh, with my Twitter account. So I'm looking forward to seeing where this series is going to go next because in the next episode, we're gonna be looking at tying in all the external services that you might have, including cloud services, social accounts, uh, and all of that fun stuff. Uh, so I'm gonna be pretty interested to see if I can get all of the requirements that I have for my system up and running, including all of my different email accounts and calendars and getting them all synced and talking in Linux Mint successfully. So thank you all for watching. If you have any questions, of course, then hit me up on Twitter at InGalactic. Uh, but if you do have the other social networks, then you can definitely contact me on Google Plus or Facebook. So definitely share these videos around if you're finding them to be helpful. And uh, I'll try and provide a link to a playlist that will kind of collate all these videos together in a pretty succinct form. So thank you all for watching and I will catch you all in the very next episode. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen.